We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. <laughs> I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Madi. And on today's episode, I have the phenomenal, the fabulous <laughs> couple, the amazing, the crowd goes wild for Corey and Sammy Brooks. <laughs> 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 Okay, these two are TikTok sweethearts and now lifestyle content creators together who lives life, okay, in the public. And so today's episode uh, is going to be about how to create uh, intimacy and vulnerability privately, but also demonstrate it publicly. Because I think that you guys have mastered that. And so uh, as somebody who wants their husband to post more with them, but he won't, oh. you guys are going to give us like, <laughs> you're going to give us all this kinds job. of like, of, yeah. of, of, of yummy, delicious tips. Yeah. But I always start off with my spice breaker. So to warm you guys up, Ooh. you both are going to yeah. answer this question. Okay. okay. Uh, when did you first fall in love with yourselves? So I first mm. fell in love with myself when, Okay. Who wants to go first? Is it ladies first? Yeah, ladies oh, first. Oh, sure. I'll go first. Okay. Um, I first fell in love myself. Well, <laughs> it's hard to talk about. I <laughs> first fell in love with myself about four or five years ago. And it happened when I started working at Barry's Boot Camp, actually. It mm. was during a really big transitional point in my life where I didn't really know what I was doing. I started this new job as a trainer at Barry's Boot Camp. And when I walked into the Red Room, it was a place that I could feel powerful, oh, wow. in charge. I had a voice. I was feeling like I was doing my part in helping people and seeing the change that I was making in people's energies and physiques. And I mean, everything just it gave me a sense of direction and mm. love for myself and kind of confidence and, okay, I knew I could be this person and I finally found a place that I can be it, but it also gives me the confidence that I can now, you know, burst out and be that person in everything in my life. Oh my gosh, I love that. Crazy. And you can pinpoint it. You're like, okay, when I walked into... <laughs> yeah. no, she was like the this Ariana movie. Grande of fitness. I took her class and I was like, this girl is a freaking rock star. <laughs> Like, she put on a show, she whooped your butt. Like, it was, I was like, wow, this girl is amazing. You're like, there was an intermission for snacks. Yeah. And, then we came, and then we came back. I, and I took a protein shake. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Okay, now, hubby, the spotlight's on you. Yeah. When did you first fall in love with yourself? Man, you know, um, I went through a little bit of a tough time uh, after I got done playing college base. I played college baseball and blew my arm out, had... Mm. for arm surgeries and so I kind of lost my like path in life like what I was gonna do was kind of up in the air I was yeah. like what the heck am I gonna do now this is like I didn't even really go to class in school so like <laughs> I didn't learn anything and you know a few years later I had man I was doing a little bit of everything I was bartending on, week on weekends I was oh, wow. uh, coaching a kid's baseball organization and I end up doing that for years. And I had 39 kids from 11 to 14 years Aww. old and they became like my brothers. They looked up to me. And I think when I turned 25 or 26, um, I was doing social media. I was coaching. I was doing some modeling work. I was doing a little bit of everything. And I just felt so grateful and that I had so many good things going on. Mm. And I remember I changed my Instagram bio when I was, I think, 25 or 26 years old. And I changed it to the happiest 26 year old in the world. And <laughs> I just knew at that time that like I was single. Oh, I'd gotten out of a relationship, a long-term five-year relationship. And I had recovered from that. And I was like, man, I was just ready to take on the world. And I just knew that like, that was, I, I was just blasting off from there. Like yeah. things were only going to get better. So, um, yeah. I feel like yeah. everybody's testimony is somehow either I got out of a bad relationship or yeah. I discovered it through like, finding a, a purposeful career or losing a career that I thought mm -hmm. that it was going to, there's always something I feel like related to career and love yeah. that yeah. it's like, okay, this is when I need to find myself again. Because <laughs> yeah, no, totally. it's so yeah. easy, you know, like we, we lose ourselves. We have an idea of what our life is supposed to look like. And when mm. um, we're in search of it or we, you know, you have this idea and it doesn't work out or pan out that way. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, okay, now how do I rediscover? Right. Like, what does that yeah. process look like? 
how the heck did you guys find each other? Because you met on, <laughs> who meets on TikTok? Like, how do you meet on TikTok? All right, you like, can take this one like, over. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us that story, because uh, I'm just trying to put two and two together. <laughs> so during COVID, I started my TikTok, and I was just scrolling one day, and this handsome face <laughs> popped up on my For You page. It's really like tailored for me. Yeah. And I went to his profile, and oddly enough, I saw in his bio at the time, happiest 29-year-old in the world. Mm. And I was like, I'm the happiest girl in the world. He's the happiest. I was like, this could work. (laughs) And so I went over to his Instagram, of course, did some stalking, did some digging. I was like, he has a dog. Check dog dad, of course. (laughs) You know, he is a big, beautiful smile. He's happy. He's doing all these things. He loves health and fitness, which I obviously love. And so... One day, I just decided to shoot my shot. I replied to one of his stories on Instagram. Yeah. And I didn't think he was going to reply. <laughs> and he did. And our first messages are so cringely flirtatious. Ooh. It is hilarious. I had some game back then. Yeah, you were sure. spitting game Ooh. for sure. It's gone now, but. And it worked, I guess. <laughs> but we talked. I mean, he replied and we talked yeah. for a day. And then I was like, okay, here's my number. If you want to keep talking, yeah. text yeah. me text me like three days later we had our first date and we never really left each other's side after that so yeah, he was, that was like it. that was a wrap man i found her yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. and i didn't even thank god for instagram and tiktok yeah well i didn't I even want no i was like mad at tiktok and instagram, <laughs> i did not want a girlfriend at the time no. i was like i said i put that thing in my bio i was the happiest 29 year of the world i didn't think i needed anything else <laughs> I wanted to say – my goal is to stay single mm-hmm. and just live the dream. I was traveling the world and then this beautiful human appeared. <laughs> appears in my DMs and I was like, oh, shit. Okay, let me tell you what I love about this testimony. Uh, <laughs> one is like I'm a huge advocate of like um, – I always speak to like aligned behaviors, aligned behaviors. If you want something, what are the behaviors that you're doing – to support that thing that it is that you say that you want. It's not enough to just like wish it. We have to actually take action. Yes. You took action. Mm-hmm. So like I'm a I'm a no I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Bumble dating expert and oh, nice. I'm always telling women like not to be afraid to show their interest. Don't be afraid to engage. Don't be afraid to interact. Don't be afraid mm-hmm. to put yourself out there because mm-hmm. what are we mostly afraid to put ourselves out there? So you took it upon yourself to like, I'm going to take this huge risk. He mm-hmm. could reject me, right. but then I'll be in the same situation that I was in if he like replies or he doesn't mm-hmm. reply, like I'll be nowhere. So yeah. I might as well put myself out there totally. and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And you took yeah. him off the market. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, You're like real quick, man. <laughs> Brush his shoulders man. off. It like started with like leaving her toothbrush there, and then she got like a drawer <laughs> the next week, and then the next week she had half my closet. And then we got our own place together, and I was like, wow, that happened really quick. <laughs> <laughs> but it was during COVID. It was everything yeah. was shut down. So all we did when we met, it was May of 2020. And so, you know, our first date was on the beach with a couple of friends. It was the yeah. only thing that we could do. And we just <laughs> sat and talked and got to know each other. Yeah. And here we are, fast forward almost, you know, four years. And it feels like 10 in the best way possible. Yeah. Because, you know, typically you meet somebody, you go on a date here and there. And, you know, yeah. and it was the complete opposite. Like we met and there was nothing to do. So we just stayed with each other. Yeah. <laughs> and we just was like, Hi. There was nothing else What's to entertain your- us. Yeah. <laughs> Color, yeah. like? what you- <laughs> no, I did tell her that when COVID ends, we end, and that ended up not happening. <laughs> it, was a joke. it was a joke. I would joke with her. Some people were scared of that, though. They were like, "Is this yeah. just you know temporary?" Because like um yeah. like cuffing season, right? That's yeah, like yeah. winter time right. into yeah. fall, where we go and we're like, "Okay, let me get like locked up really quick with someone, yeah. put some cuffs on them, and then like Valentine yeah. times you know comes around, and then they're like, okay, let me uncuff before right. I gotta buy a gift.' Right? Um, or sometimes it's the not buying a gift that uncuffs you. I bought a very window. expensive yes. gift. You know what I mean? That was the gift that I got. He was like, here is my gift. Yeah. But I love the fact that you guys were like playful about it. But that is a fear yeah. is like, is, are you only attached to me during this interim where there's yeah. nowhere else or right. there's right. no other distractions? And I think that the 
the COVID, the COVID and the quarantine process mm -hmm. or that time period put things in perspective for a lot of people who were in relationship already. Either yeah. they oh, separated because yeah. they were like, yeah, this isn't going to work. I really can't stand you. Mm -hmm. And then other people who were like, oh, my God, I can just have you to myself and really explore where this could go without the distractions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's beautiful. You guys are a testimony to like the positive yeah. of <laughs> yeah. the pandemic. Well, that's, I mean, <laughs> and it's not just the pandemic, honestly. Like I have said this for many years years that like dating has never been so easy mm -hmm. but never so hard because we do have access to bumble yeah. and all these dating apps yeah. where okay like i can just find somebody new i can just swipe yep. and then boom like it's so easy to find a person yeah but it's not always easy to find the, the person. person you know what i mean Facts. and so like that's kind of mm -hmm. when i met her i was like this isn't just another girl like she's my girl she's the girl so Ooh, that's how i felt about i love that <laughs> okay so i want you to expand on that a little bit for me yeah. so like with um there being what I call Baskin Robbins 31 flavors, where it's like this plethora of flavors. Mm -hmm. I always say that at the end of the day, you're going to go back to your favorite flavor. But mm -hmm. in the interim, you want to taste them all. Yeah. And how did you decide, like, I don't need to taste anymore. I don't need to go through the rest of the flavors to know that I have my favorite in front of me. Again, Man, you know, I, again, I had, um, basically I was in a relationship from 15 to 25. I had two girlfriends. And then after that I did, I tasted all the flavors. <laughs> <laughs> and he had his time. I had my time, but I was like on a mission to He's like, like, I discovered new flavors. No, I, well, yeah. I was like, Whoa, <laughs> we're mixing flavors. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Triple scoop comes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but, um, honestly, again, when I met her, I, I didn't, want a girlfriend I was honestly very happy mm -hmm. um I loved that I was able to date how I wanted when I wanted um and I was very transparent with all the girls that I talked to like I don't want a girlfriend mm. so I was uh, very upfront which made them even <laughs> they want you even more yeah I can change you know mind. what I mean <laughs> right um and so I think that just it, it just was one of the things when I met her I was just like man like I I felt like um so connected mm -hmm. with her that a lot of the things that I used to feel for other girls just seemed so small. Mm. And I was like, ah, I could just not do that anymore. <laughs> like, this just sounds so much better hanging out with her, you know what I mean, than having to have a whole other conversation about the same repetitive stuff yeah. all the time. And, um, you know, again, we just like really hit it off. And like, when you know, you know, type thing that people always said that to me. And I was like, I don't know about that. Like, but now I get it. <laughs> yeah. But I just, I felt like I found my person and, you know, all the, I, I found my favorite flavor, you know, and I was like, I can just rock with this flavor <laughs> yeah. forever. Like, I feel like you do find a flavor where you can always go like, you're you like, know, this is my go-to. Yeah. Flavor. And yeah. you appreciated it. Right. You like, yeah. uh, reveled in it you were like yeah. oh my god i really am grateful for this flavor yeah um and it also sounds like you did due diligence in exploring the other flavors so that you could be grateful oh, when right. your flavor we came about say that. everything led me to you yes everything <laughs> led me to you. but like when a woman hears that a man um, isn't interested in a relationship like yeah. i don't want to be in something serious yeah. how did you not see that as a red flag and run how could how come you massage the relationship more um, well, I think it's funny because as he was saying that, the things that he was doing mm -hmm. was kind of showing me we're kind of riding on the same page here. Yeah. You know, he would say, you know, I don't want a girlfriend, but yet he would still, you know, invite me over mm -hmm. or have me meet his friends or certain signs that I was kind of like, okay. We're moving along. Well, mm -hmm. we're moving along. I'm thinking that we're feeling the same way. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we had so much time together that we started having you know, the conversations get a little bit more deeper and yeah. a little bit more towards, you know, the relationship conversations. And he would say, <laughs> you know, he would say like, yeah, I really don't want a girlfriend, but I don't want you to leave, yeah. you know? And so he, in being honest, he was also showing signs that allowed me to continue to- it Kept you motivated. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't, it was so weird because it felt like we were on the same page the whole time because- yeah. I don't know. It we did. were just the conversation. How did were you get so him to easy. commit then? So like because oftentimes when we we have a lot of situationships out there in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Where women will hear this and say, like, well, he's showing me the signs that he wants a relationship. We're spending all this yeah. time together, but he's still saying that he wants to be on the market and a free agent. Mm -hmm. So was there a conversation of like, we need to be together? Um, I don't 
Thank did we ever know. make it like official boyfriend and girlfriend? Yeah, like two months into yes. us meeting, we ended up making it official. And I was like, yeah. I want you to be my girlfriend. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you were the I person. I, I, when I would tell mm-hmm. her that I didn't want a girlfriend, she was like, that's okay. Like, we can just keep doing this and have fun. And she <laughs> but, didn't pressure me, which was yeah. out of the ordinary. When mm-hmm. I would tell that to most girls, yeah. they would – I could tell it made him feel a certain way, which I understand, mm-hmm. but yeah. she was very like calm, cool, and collected mm-hmm. and like, I've got this type thing. Yeah. Like, okay, <laughs> if you want to do that, like I'm, you know, over here. And I was like, well, I don't want you to be over there. <laughs> like that, that right maybe one, it was a little bit of a chase uh-huh. in a way, you know, like rather than her just. But it was, we don't have to be boyfriend, girlfriend right now, but when yeah. you want that, you have to ask. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I'm not that trying part. to be confused. Oh, right. That yeah, part. yeah, she did so say that. There was that yeah. communication. There and that's that the necessary yeah. element yeah. Yes. that I think we all need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I saw this um, video of a girl a long time ago, and it said, if you are confused about something in your mm-hmm. relationship, it's not the right relationship. Yeah. And so I was, yeah. like, I, I always have that in the back of my mind. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. You know, I was upfront about messaging him. I was upfront about what I'm open to and what I was looking Mm -hmm. for. And I was like, okay, if you want to make this serious, don't make me question if we're together or we're not. Mm. When that's ready for you, you know, I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But you got to ask. We were big big over communicators. Like, and I was very truthful about everything. She was very truthful. Like, we started off our friendship Mm -hmm. our relationship on a very good like foundation which Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of I'm sorry a lot of relationships they start off on the wrong foot and that just leads to like the domino effect of a million other things happening yeah and I feel like we just had a very strong foundation since the beginning what's the wrong foot that you're referring to I mean trust issues Mm. communication issues um you know, maybe, maybe guys leading them on and not t- saying like, Hey, I don't want a girlfriend, maybe playing with them and pulling strings, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but we were just transparent. I was like, I don't know if I want a girlfriend right now. I like you, but I don't want a girlfriend. And then I was like, okay, I want a girlfriend. <laughs> 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 and so I think that it's important they, that communication, uh, cause I want to reiterate this, right? I think it's mm-hmm. important early on that you, um, told him like, I want a partnership. And so when you are ready to be in partnership, I need to know. Mm -hmm. And so that then puts like the ball in his court, but also makes him step up to the plate when he's actually ready to like get into the game. And so your lack of pressure also made him or not, I'm going to say guided. Um, <laughs> Made me wait a minute. I don't want to hurt the male ego. Oh, no. Let me let's not hurt the male ego. Uh, you you guided him to a place mm-hmm. where he had like full autonomy over himself, and he was like, "This is my choice." Mm-hmm. But you vocalize like, "These are the things that I need, and these are the boundaries." And so I think that we don't do that enough. We just right. try to pretend like we're going with the flow, mm-hmm. and then we're dating people or they're dating a multiple multiple bunch of people and telling us they don't want a relationship but then like never circling back to like that place of like okay let's do this I don't want anyone else Mm -hmm. and I think that that's very important that like we know for security reasons that there's no more competition that there's right that like this is like locked and loaded Mm -hmm. yeah um so I applaud you guys in that um (laughs) it's a great beautiful tiktok testimony um (laughs) I, I I love this. Oh, and we have to shout out um because you uh, we were talking about this earlier. Uh Alyssa Jacobs, um Ginger Jacobs on the gram, yeah. who connected us, right? Yeah, so yeah. what drew me to you and like why I also brought you guys on was uh seeing how public you guys are about your relationship and these like mm-hmm. videos that I'm watching that I'm like <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is so funny. I do this all the time. My husband does this all the time. (laughs) And it's almost like we get to laugh at the annoying things because that's what you guys are highlighting. It's like only annoying videos of like bad habits. Yeah. One that stood out to me was uh, when I wake up versus like when he wakes up. Oh, yeah. And so you were being like super quiet and considerate. Mm -hmm. That's how I am. I'm like, okay, how can I make this like a safe, you know, welcome environment for him when we go to bed and when we rise? Right. And meanwhile, my husband is like, turn on every light turn on blast music like it's like insane and so i was cracking up at your guys video (laughs) but uh ginger jacobs was like you need to know Corey." she was like um for whatever reason she was like the universe is telling me to connect you guys and so 
she put us on like a group DM. Yeah, I'm glad she did. And yeah. then I was like, hey, we need to know each other. And like, I need to know your wife too. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make this a triple oh, scoop oh, cone again. I love it. Um, I love it. Well, back to the flavors. Back to I the know. flavors. No. <laughs> My husband would be like, what is this episode about? <laughs> I'm just playing, babe. I'm just playing. But I think that your guys' relationship is beautiful in the sense that, um, there's obviously a level of like depth to you guys and vulnerability for you guys to be on the same page where you guys are having these intimate experiences with each other, but then making them public. Mm -hmm. One, I want to know, how do you guys do that? How do you keep things like personal and safe between you, but then also know when to pick and choose to make something public? It seems like a hard thing to decide. Yeah. I, I don't know, know if it's very like a conscious decision of maybe this, maybe that. I think we do a lot of um, question box on our Instagrams mm -hmm. and I love to hear what people want to know. Mm. And I think that's a good doorway for us in that sense. We do pick, okay, maybe that's a little bit too far. Mm. You know, this is something that we would love to share, but for the most part, we are really open books. We like sharing. We like yeah. the communication. And we're like proud of each other too. Like yeah. I want to like show her off. I'm like, man, she's Aww. so great. Like <laughs> I just want the world to see how great she is. And I know that she makes people smile. I know yeah. that she just has this insane, she exudes like the highest energy that people just need to see that. And I, you know, I love it. If she doesn't want me to, it's too bad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. No, but we have stuff. Do you guys have to approve the content before it goes out first? Are yeah, you guys we like, always, are you okay with me posting We're this? always yeah. like, hey, what about this? And We're always together. Yeah, so. we're always, it's never anything like putting each other down. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's never anything negative about each other. Yeah. Who's usually pitching the ideas? We're I mean, really, 50, it's pretty 50-50. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So both of you guys are coming like, I want to do this video together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I had already done social media mm -hmm. for about nine years. Mm -hmm. And that then she saw me on TikTok. And she was working at... <laughs> yeah. And then she was a fan. <laughs> yeah. And she like, was working at... Girl. Well, she was working at Barry's. And she worked at Barry's for the next year or so. But yeah. I was like, hey, I really want to be with somebody that will do social media with me. Just because mm -hmm. I travel so oh, much. Oh, this was out the <clears> gate <throat> that you were like, yeah. you got to be on the social media. Mm -hmm. so well, then. Yeah, it just made sense. Yeah. I wanted to be with somebody that enjoyed the like performance yeah. too. It's just that um, it's a really cool life. Like you get to travel <laughs> and you work with really great brands, yeah. and it's just like a fun lifestyle. And to be with somebody that like doesn't do that at all, yeah, like just would it make sense for my life? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I just wanted her to do it with me, and she was like, "Yeah, let's do it." And so she started posting every day, and. She even had like Cardi B repost one of her things Aww. and she like blew up from it and like one thing led to the next and now Do you take just, credit for that? You're like, I did that. No, I she can take all the credit. <laughs> She's been crushing it. And just, it's, it's been so fun. Like we get to just do some really cool stuff together. She like, technically gets the credit because she's like, I yeah. slid three years. She did. No, she gets all the credit. She gets all the credit. I'm not going to take nothing from her. So she's been crushing it. But yeah, I mean, we've just kind of chosen that life that where it's it's going to be public. You know what, what do you mean? do like, when your partner doesn't feel like the content creation though? If she's not in a mood that day or you're not in the mood, but you know you need anything. to put something out. Or we just, yeah, I mean, we well, do have days where we will like just go explore, go on hikes, go mm -hmm. travel. We'll go do whatever we want. I mean, mm -hmm. but. Um, the breaks are good. They're needed. We, you know what I mean? But we have these days where we'll film a lot in one day that like we're good for the next Kind of like you with your podcast, probably. Yeah. You probably film several in a day. Enough so that I can like, yeah. Right. And then you can breathe. <laughs> Take a break, yeah. You, can, you know what I mean? So it's kind of the same thing with us. Like we have a good little um, routine and it's like systematic at this point, you know? Yeah. Give me some so. advice. I want my husband to do more content with me. Yeah. But he is like, I, would, I don't want to say he's <laughs> anti in front of the camera, but he's mm -hmm. very much like a... Uh, corporate. He's, yeah. I'm going to say buttons up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> But he's very much like, I don't have time for all that. And yeah. I'm like, but I need more content with you in it. And yeah. he's like, so go create it. Don't include me. <laughs> I know. I mean, how do I encourage? How do I motivate my partner? Give me I, some tips. I feel like I would just ask him what he would be okay with initially. Maybe mm -hmm. it's you asking him questions about his job. Maybe yeah. it's you asking questions specifically about um, certain tips or tricks or things that he's really – 
you know, passionate about because then he's going to be more willing to talk about it. Sometimes I'll come to Corey and I'll be like, will you do this dance trend? He's like, you know what? No, I'm not into it. I'm like, okay, well, what could we do today that you're, you know, is like kind of on the line, but you're still okay with. Yeah. Again, it's the communication part of it where you want him to be excited. Yep. So bringing him in on kind of his terms, I bet he might be a little bit more. I like this spicy tip Mm -hmm. because you are speaking my language now. So like talk to him about what he's passionate about and that would reel him in because he can talk. So well, like he can talk, get him talking. Yeah. Talking, yeah. Get him talking. I like and just set the this. camera up, and he won't even notice it. You know what yeah. I mean? So like, that means I need to talk to him about like Excel spreadsheets first. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're gonna see a couple of videos that are like spicy. Why are you? Posting yeah. Why are you? About posting? Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, I, I, I absolutely celebrate him. Um, yeah. He's writing a book right now uh, and just finished Marriage and Finances. Oh wow. Man. So wow, like, uh, he's and he's the CFO of my company. Yeah. So we too have like a partnership where we're both okay. Where are you strong and where are you strong? Mm-hmm. And yeah. like how do I compliment that? Yeah. And so when I see that in other couples, I absolutely like adore it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that one interesting thing about you guys also is something that stood out was like uh, Wingman Wednesday. Oh yeah. Wingman Wednesday. <laughs> How the heck like oh did that come about? Man, it's honestly crazy. I actually had this idea like a while ago, a year ago yeah, now. A long time and ago. because I met Sammy on social media, I just had the idea of like helping other people meet their person mm-hmm. on social mm-hmm. media. And I have a pretty large following of female audience. And so like that have been following me before her. And so I was always like, I wonder why they're still following me. Like, what can I do to give back to my, my female followers? And they're always asking me like, yo, do you have any brothers or friends that are single? You can look at like, we love you and Sammy's relationship. Like, do you have any friends that you could hook it up with? And I'm like, man, that would be cool if I put my single buddies on blast and basically just like helped my buddies find a, a, one of my girl followers or whatever and just see if it works. And I had the idea and I didn't do anything for like six, eight months. Yeah. Just because I was like, it was like a new thing. I was like, ah, I don't know how logistically to make this even work or like, I feel like it'll flop. I don't know. And one day I woke up and I was just like, I'm just going to make one right now and I'm going to post it and just forget about it. And I did. I literally sat there and I was like, I literally had just some little headphones on. I was like, all right, unscripted completely. Yeah. Just yeah. Threw out a bunch of stuff like, hey, this is my buddy Lion. He's 32 years old, living in LA. Um, and I just, boom, posted it. And all these comments just started hitting hard. And I was like, oh my God. It was really cool. But then how did you pick, yeah. how do you pick the girl for Well, the, your guy, buddy, gets the, the guy gets to pick. Okay. Obviously, mm-hmm. he goes through the comments and just like, we'll find, and I'll send him some, like, I'll also be going through and I'll mm-hmm. say, hey, what's your type? Or, yeah. And I get a million DMs too. Like, so many DMs That's that really cool. I have to go through. And girls <laughs> are sending so cool. in like, casting type videos like yeah. hey my name's you know what I mean and this is why I think I'd be good for him yeah. and mm-hmm. so I go through and I send them to the guys and then I basically help them like set up the date and everything I connect them and then I let them take it from there type thing and beautiful so, have we had any yeah. like successes yet yeah yes. yeah one of my guys <laughs> just actually texted me a few days ago and he made it like official <gasps> with his girl mm-hmm. yeah Yay. and they're like serious Ooh. and so a lot of the other guys have gone on a lot of dates yeah. and yeah. Um, not a lot of dates, but like they've gone on a date yeah. or mm-hmm. some have actually gone on a lot of dates too. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but, uh, the way that with obviously with Instagram, yeah. the algorithm keeps pushing them. So like yeah. some guys that I posted two months ago, they're like, Whoa, there's 500 new yeah. girls that I need. Mm-hmm. And they're still getting DMS. And, yeah. uh, so it's like something that'll, you know, even if they don't find it now, like yeah. they might end up popping up on some girls for you page or whatever, like I did on her. Yeah. And it could work down the road. You just yeah. never know. So I'm I just love the optimism. Yeah. I'm just staying consistent. Like I don't need thousands of women to yeah. comment. I really just need to find one girl. For I love that the way guy, you're playing you know? matchmaker though. Yeah, yeah. I think this is beautiful. Um, it's fun. Yeah. I pride myself on being what I call like a magnetic matchmaker yeah. where I'm helping you uh, raise your vibration and be in alignment with your purpose mate. Oh nice. And so what you're doing is like contributing to society and the world in helping folks that. connect and meet the person that they should be with, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do you, uh, Sammy, stay secure and confident when <laughs> 500 women are like <laughs> posting, you yeah. know, to, like messaging him with audition videotapes? Yeah, I mean, I get this question a lot and it truly comes down to I cannot control what other people do. Mm. And whoever is in his inbox, whoever the yeah. message is from, it's, I can't control it. And 
the basis of where my um, chillness lies is that I trust my husband to not act on it. Yeah. And if there's that, I, I mean, I don't have a care in the world about it, truly. I don't worry about it. I don't think about it. It's just being um, so fundamentally sound yeah. in what we've created that sometimes, I mean, we'll be in bed sometimes and I look over yeah. and he's like swiping through girls. <laughs> yeah, photos. I'll go through girls because I'm, like, I'm. Who is that? <laughs> yeah. You know, obviously joking around, but it's funny because it is, there yeah. is so much attention, but it's. But I put her on blast even, too all the time. That's, you know, the other you know stuff. they all know that I'm married and, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. they're always, uh, all the girls are hitting me up to get her to start a wing woman. I think that would be super cute. So I know. They're all, they're all, that's what they're messaging yeah, me about. Yeah, we're all, <laughs> oh, we want to do it. Both of us have yeah. a really mm-hmm. high percentage of female following. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just worried that if I put these amazing women out there, the, um, the return won't be as great as the other way right. around but just we should, because that's of the not percentage an, of our following. But we keep saying, know? like, that's not an excuse to not do yeah, something either. Like, we true. probably should do it. Yeah. We just need to... You're going yeah, to have to, and I'll just give you, like, a tip. Uh, you're going to have to uh, market harder towards men. Yeah. yeah. Um, I throw, like, speed dating events called March Matchness for the oh, spicy life. Nice. And the women who sign up, mm-hmm. crazy mm-hmm. amount of women who are like, yes, mm-hmm. let's go on this speed dating. Yeah. The yeah. men are, like, Shire. too cool for school yeah. or shy mm-hmm. or just, like, mm, I don't really need help. Like, yeah. right? There's <clears> this... Um, yeah. Uh, you know, master of my fate, captain of my soul. I don't need somebody like helping me and yeah. my partner. Um, but everybody needs help. But I just go harder to the guys. Like yeah. I yeah. put more incentive. I I made it March Matchness, similar to March Madness. Right. So I yeah. so similar to how you were like speak your husband's like language or what yeah. he's passionate about. We have to do the same thing when it comes to men because right. they're not gonna show up always the same way as women do right yeah. and so but that's not an excuse <laughs> to not throw my event just like it's not an excuse for yeah. you not to do wing woman wednesday yeah totally. <laughs> i know we need I to know. we definitely need yeah. to get on that yeah i love <laughs> it i think it's like a, a great idea it would be super cute for you guys doing it too and then like us and there's so much gratification right now you're at the beginning yeah. of like seeing like commitment mm-hmm. wait till you're attending weddings wait till you're seeing children yeah. and you're yeah. like okay the babies look like you but i'm responsible for creating it yeah. like there's so <laughs> much like gratification in that yeah i'm telling you like this is you guys have uh, discovered part of your purpose out there i agree <laughs> I, no i agree mm-hmm. and it's been really fun and fulfilling uh we look forward to it every week yeah. and it's just been like super cool to see like people come together and just show this much like support and love on mm-hmm. us. Just, I don't know. We, I, even like when I'm making the videos, I'm like always trying to hype up the dudes. Yeah. Just cause like the guys, like they're not going to go out there and hype themselves out up. Like I'm going to hype them up. You know what I mean? Facts. So like, it's a good feeling to like be able to present men like in a really good positive way. Yeah. And hopefully something good comes from it so this yeah. like lifestyle that you guys live people are like oh my gosh that sounds magical you guys are like traveling you guys are uh, influencers what's the long term goal though because if we're dependent mm-hmm. on like social for our career goals mm-hmm. right and a lot of us have poured a lot into social cuz yeah. it does yeah. come back to us but what's the long term like goal as far as uh, careers for the relationship is concerned cuz you guys are a power couple mm mm-hmm. mhm we talk about this a lot and we just got <laughs> married and had our honeymoon. We were talking about it a lot, actually, just like what our, um, our long-term goals mm-hmm. are. Um, and it's super tough because like we are in such a great spot right yeah. now and we're mm-hmm. super happy. Um, <clears throat> and like starting something, um, like a product or a brand mm-hmm. or something like we're very entrepreneurial, like thinkers, mm-hmm. but like starting something it would also add like, a lot of stress and like <laughs> we don't claim to be just like super smart in business like we're good at like, like can we take this on creating content like we're good yeah. at a lot of different things but yeah. we're not like um we don't claim to be like great at anything like we're good at everything yeah and so we're trying to find like what our next big thing is mm-hmm. and um it's a big like, question mark. we started investing in some companies we mm. um I mean, we have invested in a lot of companies lately. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we started doing that. We we just We're putting we, our hands in a lot of pockets. Yeah, just well, we just bought our we bought our first house too. So like, real estate might be something that's like easy to like just buy. You know, like we might do that. 
and um, she's always wanted to do more real estate stuff. So short answer, we don't know yet. Yeah, and we, that's okay, we, right? Yeah. Like I that's feel, I feel like yeah. I want to even talk more about that because yeah. I feel like there's always this pressure on us to get in partnership with someone who is living yeah. in their dream, in their career, and extremely successful, mm -hmm. able to provide financial security, and yeah. it's guaranteed. And then there's like relationships like this where you're like, well, I don't know what five years, you know, down mm -hmm. the road looks like for us. And yeah. that's OK. Yeah. And you're giving mm -hmm. yourselves permission to still be in love, even though he may not have made maybe a certain amount or you may not have come in with a certain career that was going to make you both extremely mm -hmm. like wealthy. Like, I think yeah. we have these ideal visions of what it's supposed to look like. Yeah. How did you guys wrap your heads around that, though? Like. Uh, both of you guys being in the creative space can sometimes be hard. Uh, mm -hmm. How did you guys come to terms with that? Well, I think it's just allowing yourself to be where you are. You know, like he said, we bought the house, we got married, our honeymoon, and we came home. And, you know, after you're consumed with so much of that high energy, your mental capacity, everything is going into those big life decisions. When we came home, we were like, okay, what's next? Always. We're very, you know, motivated people. We don't yeah. like sitting uh, down, yeah. you know? And so we kind of sat there and stared at each other and we were like, wait, this is okay to be next. Mm -hmm. You know, this time in our lives right now where we do have great freedom, you know, we're doing really well and we have time and space and energy to actually accept a lot of things around mm -hmm. us and be kind of like yes people right now yeah. yeah which is great and you know looking forward our future is with a family hopefully and so we're like we're not going to have this time again really in our mm. lives so let's be so present very very present yeah. very kind of like let's just maybe chill out feel what this feels like right here and see what we can get our hands into both Corey and I love so many things in life so it's actually really hard for us to kind of hone in on <laughs> yeah. one thing and and that's why yeah. <clears throat> we do so much lifestyle because we're like wow we love this and this and this and this yeah. and this but thinking mm -hmm. about honing it, honing it in and starting a company for one thing or doing you know putting all of our <laughs> eggs in one basket yeah. Yeah. Is, um, it's a little bit scary and a little bit daunting mm -hmm. because you know, there's just so much we out We don't want there. to ruin what's going on right now. Yeah. And yeah. that also takes away from the energy of the other things that yeah. are working mm -hmm. for you. We're very, right. like, last minute. Like, I'm doing the Malibu triathlon mm -hmm. this weekend. And um, <laughs> so we – it's, like, a family thing, too. So last year we did it as well. Um, so Saturday is a relay race. And I do it with my dad, her dad, and me. So I swim. Her dad bikes. My dad runs. And um, then I do the full thing on Sunday by myself. And anyway, so <laughs> just yesterday, her dad has an injury and oh, had to no. drop out of the race. No, he's okay, thankfully. He's okay. But, yeah. Um, but Sammy uh, stepped up to the plate. Hopping and in there. She's going to do the freaking swim on Yay. Saturday. And I'm gonna, oh, and I'm have you been training for it? Yeah, no. I'm a swimmer, so oh, okay. <laughs> but she hasn't been, she hasn't been training. But no, I haven't been yeah. training. I just signed up last night. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> She's just going to wing this whole Michael Phelps yeah. thing. Yeah. But, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, you know, the fact that she can just, like, step up and go hit a mile swim. Yeah. Like, it's nice that we're like, like we have our hands in so many different things. Like we're focused on our health and our fitness. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. we're always, you know, wanting to, we can literally book a flight and leave tomorrow and we have no obligation. You know what I mean? Like, but to have this time right now until we yeah. have kids or yeah. until that next thing like sparks, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, um, we just want to enjoy some time and figure out you know, our next thing in You're the like, meantime. You're so. like, world, stop pressuring us, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like we do live in a world where, like, people are like, oh, wake up early, grind, sell your soul. Don't sleep. Screw your friends. Yeah. We're, we're like, we love our friends. Like, we yeah. love our family. Yeah. We love our downtime. We love our sleep. We like to eat yes. eat whatever we want. But like, Sammy, even wait till you're you know a mom. I, mean? I think then it will even be like, guilty for wanting to sleep and like mm -hmm. i started to yeah. find myself in that and i'm like wait i yeah. need my sleep that's what y'all are not going to take that away no. from me yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah so but. it is this like pressure from other people that you start yeah. to like take on and i love that you guys are as like a team saying no we're not going to do that we're yeah. going to like create our own plan yeah. together at our terms and time right mm -hmm. uh but since marriage <laughs> right because you know i have lots of questions yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> what have you learned about yourself in partnership since having been married? How have you shown up? What's been the biggest shocker in like, okay, I didn't realize I could be this person or I didn't realize this thing about me. What has relationship brought up for you that you realized about yourself? Hmm. Um, before I met her, I was very solo. Like I said, like I was a one man team, um, very selfish. If you want to call mm -hmm. it selfish, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but I was, Me, I'm yeah, selfish. I was <laughs> selfish. you know what I mean? And, um, but ever since meeting her, I think that was one thing that I was worried about is me being selfish and caring more about myself yeah. than her, which I still do to some extent, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like can't I can't change it all. Okay. Yeah. I tell my husband the same thing. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> but I feel like I've been, um, I've surprised myself with how good of a teammate I am mm. and a husband so far. And like when I'm a dad, you know, so, Aww, that's yeah. so sweet. I feel like I'm going to be a, a good dad. teammate. So yeah. I've surprised myself in that aspect. Like I, um, always like consider her yeah, and like the things that I'm doing or what I'm saying even, um, and just like how I treat her on the daily, like I'm very, I try to be very gentle with her. Um, but like before I was very pretty extreme. Like I was, I was, you know, like, um, my way or the highway, but mm. now I'm like, well, you weren't as flexible. <laughs> what does Sammy think about, <laughs> about this? Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't be so rambunctious and just like sporadically like make a decision yeah you like, take her into consideration you know um, you're like i didn't know i was so considerate yeah <laughs> but i i am still learning like how to fill her in like even today she was like what are we wearing is this in a studio or is this outside where is it and i'm like i honestly didn't even i need to give her more detail you know what i mean because yes, i don't always. need detail you're like you just tell me to be ready a certain time yeah. and like boom no questions asked I often forget that she has questions. Like, and a woman I need has to give to answers. <laughs> yeah. I need to fill my bag with all the things, oh, all the really? stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. What about you, Sammy? What have you, what's been the biggest eye opener that you've learned about yourself in marriage? I think that I have finally found like my voice, mm. as kind of cliche as that sounds. But growing up, um, even my mom and I were both very empathetic and we're both very passive people. Ooh. And because of that through life, I feel like I've been um, taken advantage of or said like yes to everything. Yeah. Just stretch myself thin. And through, you know, growing up and past relationships and finding berries and in the past couple years, I've truly found a place where I feel like I can speak up mm. and say you know, how I'm feeling, what I want, and if it's not what I want, how to get to what I want mm. and not be considered rude or mean. Yeah. That was always my worry because I don't, um, you know, I know I'm not that person, yeah. but I also don't like the feeling of being taken advantage of. Yeah. So I think that going back to just being vocal about, hey, this is where I'm at and feeling like powerful, you know, like I – deserve this, this, this. I want this, this, this. If you're not going to give it to me, you know, this isn't going to work. And I've never been like that. Yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> being married from being boyfriend and girlfriend to fiancés to being married, I feel like it's like the last type of grounding where my feet are like dug in the dirt, you know, and I feel so good and so connected. Mm -hmm. And I truly feel like I've blossomed into a, you know, woman that's not afraid to Ask for what you want. Yeah, exactly. That was always really hard for me. Freedom has like been a really big thing for us. Yeah. Um, I, and one of the things that I was so scared of getting into a serious relationship was losing my freedom. Every man, you're not allowed. <laughs> right? Yeah, allowed. was losing my but. But we've talked about this before. But like, yeah. we feel more free now than ever to be exactly like who we are. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we were also just like we got each other, and like like it goes back to being a good teammate. Like I can, you know. I, she's got me. You know yeah. what I mean? I know she does. And she knows yeah. that I have her. And yeah. like, we're not going to ever let that, you know, prevent us. And like, it's just nice to have that freedom mm -hmm. and still feel freedom rather than restricted in like your life, you know? So you're going to sell us really quick, all the men out there <laughs> on commitment. Okay. <laughs> Give me like the major benefits of when you are in partnership versus when you're single. Um, Give me like three major ones. Three major ones. Um. Okay, but like being committed to her, um, like it's just like one less thing that I have to wake up and, you know, um, not worry about, but like I know that I have my, um, my 
my love life like figured out. Like I, you know, like I don't wake up and think about scrolling on all these dating apps. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of nice. Like my brain isn't like pumped with, you know what I mean? Like with all these flavors, like I literally wake up and I have one flavor and like, you know, it's not distracting. Um, um, what else is good about committing? I mean, obviously if you find the right person, you know what I mean? Like, um, it's just uh, hold on. Let me think about this. Yeah, no, it's okay. Me, think about it because like, there's answers. benefits yeah. to. I think there's benefits <laughs> to being it single. So bad to <laughs> um, and then there's benefits to commitment. Yeah, and I think that a lot of men share the like, I'm afraid to give up my freedom. Yeah, and you said like, well, we're more free now that we're in relationship. Oh right, yeah. And so I want you to just speak to like how your life has been enhanced maybe yeah. since being in relationship versus when I was single. You know, yeah, I had all the flavors, but I was also, you know, at the STD office more. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm just joking, but I'm no, saying, for like, real. No, you're right. There's, like, things, like, that, you know, your your life does change when you get into okay. a relationship. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is a, a, a probably the number one thing. Um, but when – one of the reasons that, that I did marry her was because my life was just going to be better with her in it mm-hmm. than out of it. So committing to her – um, I knew that I was gonna, my life was just going to be better. You know what I mean? Whereas before, um, my life was great. You know what I mean? But like, it wasn't as good as it would be with her, like in every aspect of life, honestly, like, um, just, you know, you can go further together type thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it, she just brought a lot of benefits to my life, like emotionally, um, just for myself, um, I feel like it goes back to the freedom. Like I feel like I can be myself. Like I don't really care about what everybody else thinks. Like yeah. as long as she <laughs> loves me, then I'm pretty good. You know what I mean? Which is pretty cool. You know, like you don't really experience that when you're single. Um, you have to still care what people think. You have to kind of still care about what people think a little bit. Yeah. Huh. You know? Okay. I like that perspective. You're going to give us one more. I'm making this hard for you. I know you are. Um, Sell us, sell us, sell us, marriage, commitment, relationship. Commitment. Um, <laughs> just longevity. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be, you know, in my mid-40s and just like, I don't know. Like, commitment is just um, – He's like, I don't want to be old and alone. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just like building, like, something greater, mm-hmm. you know? Like, we're all human. And I feel like, um, like I, again, just having a family and – um, having something that I can lean on every day, um, and just knowing that like we're going to have children, like that is super powerful. That's the greatest thing in the world to me. I'm not saying I guess you you can have kids if you're not committed to. But yours is different. You're saying <laughs> yeah. so. So I hear you, right? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna verbalize it for you. Uh, you're saying legacy. Yeah. So in finding a partner who you love versus yeah. having a family with the partner yeah. who you don't, <laughs> right? Uh, you committing to her <clears throat> makes you confident in the legacy that you're going to create. Totally. So my uh, my parents and I thought they were crazy for the longest time, and I still do. But <laughs> my parents are high school sweethearts, uh-huh. and I was like, that sucks. Like, <laughs> you know they what I mean? Like, no flavors. That sucks. You know what I mean? Um, and her parents, she comes from a uh, a they're divorced, like, you know, a blended family. Um, and I have just always looked up to my parents slightly, Mm -hmm. uh, because they are just like, um, it's so like, uh, just admiring to see someone that's been together for that long Mm -hmm. and they've been so committed and, um, it's just super powerful. You know what I mean? Like you look at them and you're just like, wow, they do everything together. They're besties. Like, they got They're each other's still back. They're ride or die. Like literally nothing else matters. Are they still in love? Oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Now yeah. that's rare. Yeah. When I hear and people yeah. say like they come from a two-parent home, I'm like, mm. oh, my God. Yeah. And then I ask them if their parents were in love. They're like, mm. Mm, mom just stayed for us. Oh, or no. dad is like tolerating her. You're like there's always this like yeah. but. Mm-hmm. With you saying this, I love to they're hear super cute. parents are still in <laughs> love. No, oh they're gosh. super cute. Yeah. They still play tennis together. They do. I mean, they do everything together. Yeah, so. And adorable. this is why also, too, you're able to. It's funny, Mr. I don't want a relationship. You're now yeah. marrying your parents. I know. Because um, now you're like, we do everything together. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, my dad told me like – um before I met Sammy yeah. and my parents never, never really talked relationship stuff with me. Mm-hmm. Um, just, I don't know why they just, um, they were high school sweethearts. I did. I, they knew like, I don't even want a girlfriend. I don't want to get married probably. 
And then my dad was like, hey, son, you should think about getting a girlfriend one day. And I was like, oh, here we go. Mm-hmm. And then she showed up and I was like, weird. It's weird <laughs> that he like spoke that. And I, yeah. Um, sometimes we do this with parents, like whatever they say, you want to do the opposite yeah. of. Mm-hmm. And I kind of like didn't fight it at first, but I was kind of like, that's just so weird that he said that. And then someone so great pops into my life. And you know what I mean? Like I can't put him down. Like dad has it figured out. Like him and mom have been together forever mm-hmm. and he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and so I gave it a chance and I love that there yeah. was support across the board for you guys to be like in this relationship. Yeah. I think uh, it's funny what you say about like your dad saying, you know, you should think about a yeah. relationship because what's crazy is that like your parents have each other so they're yeah. good yeah mm-hmm. they were probably worried who's gonna take care of you we can't do it forever right so they're yeah. like <laughs> yeah where is the person who's going to like yeah. make sure you're good because someone's mm-hmm. got to be there the, yeah the, good, the bad and the ugly you know what i mean and luckily we haven't had any ugly times mm-hmm. we haven't even really had many bad times I don't think we've had a lot of good stuff. And so Our consideration of that is very, very, it's interesting, but like, you know, that you know that those days are always going to happen. Yeah. The bad like, is going to happen. The bad is yeah, going to happen. It's how you work through it. It's how yeah. you work through it. And not to say you're anticipating it, but like you have to know that something is going to happen. Yeah. And you have to also know that like, I have a person there that has my back and they're going to be there with me as well. Mm-hmm. So going through things on your own is tough. You know what I mean? Like it really is. Mm-hmm. And and you know. he just sold us on relationship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew he could do it, girls. We just oh, full circle. We made it. Full circle. We just had to get. We just had to get. Life is better in a committed relationship. <laughs> just so we're clear. Just when it comes down. Yes, to it. we did it. <laughs> okay, so. I really appreciate you guys coming on. I want people to be able to find you. I want like uh, them to be able to explore like your journey and watch you guys as you guys expand. No pressure uh, for what like the next moves are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if they do want to join you on this journey of discovery, because there's a ton of couples that are in the discovery process, right? Yeah. Um, I'm even going th- through that with my husband right now. It's like, do you stay at your company and get promoted or do you come with me at the spicy life full time? Like, Mm -hmm. and how are we going to get there? And I think that it's okay to have those, like, I don't necessarily know exactly what next year is going to look like, but let's just start the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that's like extremely relatable and important for us to do versus like, okay, you need to be CEO by tomorrow and I need to be CEO. Like, that's just, we can't handle all that pressure. (laughs) We're all just figuring it out from day to time. So where can people join you on your journey? Share with us. Um, I'm on TikTok, Samantha Swanson One, and then also on Instagram, Shmammy. Shmammy. <laughs> at Shmammy. <laughs> Corey, where can I find um, you? Instagram is at Corey Brooks, and then my TikTok is at Corey B. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's all we're on right now. I mean, we have YouTube, but we don't really do a lot with it. <laughs> but <laughs> those are our main things. It. Honestly, Wingman Wednesday is my, my bread and butter right now. So if y'all ever want to tune into Wingman Wednesday and find a husband, I got you. <laughs> I love it. You guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at Spicy Mati. Go to thespicylife.com. Share this episode with a friend. Make sure you click and subscribe to all of my good stuff. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.